Well, congregation, we are uh, getting back into our sermon series on 12 spiritual disciplines. And uh, the discipline we're going to talk about today, it may not at first seem like it is particularly relevant, but I think we'll find uh, after a few moments that it really is. We're going to talk today about the spiritual discipline of fellowship. And first we have to ask ourselves, what is fellowship? And then we ask, why do it? And those qu questions are uh, connected together. Answering the one will help us to understand the other. First of all, we need to understand that fellowship is far more than just hanging out with your friends. I mean, why else would the early disciples have devoted it, uh, devoted themselves to it if it was uh, just hanging around, right? In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we read, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to, the, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. You see, fellowship is it is so important and central that the the author of acts luke notices or notes for us that the the early disciples they devoted themselves to fellowship and to the apostles teaching and to the breaking of bread and prayer fellowship is connected to jesus deepest desires for us his followers. In John chapter 17 verses 20 to 21, we read Jesus saying, my prayer is not for them alone, that is his disciples alone, but also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Which begs the question, you know, how could any group of people possibly be one if they didn't fellowship with each other? Right? And fellowship isn't something that just happens either. It is a genuine discipline. The author of Hebrews highlights this for us. He says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. The author of Hebrews says, You know, even if the world is falling apart, even if it looks as if things are disastrous, you need to fellowship. You need to spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And you do this when you get together. Brandon Hilgeman, whose article, The Twelve Spiritual Disciplines That Will Make Your Faith Strong, was the inspiration for this uh, sermon series, says it really well. He says, together the embers of a fire grow, re glow red hot, but scattered they grow cold. That is why fellowship, the discipline of fellowship, is so important. But we ask ourselves, we ask, well, how do we fellowship now? We can't get together in our church buildings. We, we're not even supposed to get together in our homes, except for with the people who already live in our homes. We have to avoid uh, getting together in large groups, and we have to make sure that we protect those who are particularly vulnerable, and, and, and we have to protect our healthcare workers by flattening the curve. So how do we fellowship? Well, that's a really good question. And I think there are really great answers to that question. I mean, one of the most obvious answers to that question is that phones still work. Telephones still work. We can pick a few families. Any, every one of us could pick one or two or five or however many families in the church we can and in the community uh, around us. Pick some families and, and commit to calling them. 
on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, on a whatever, every couple of days, discern that with God. Who is God calling you to fellowship with intentionally over the phone? Call them. Check on them. See how they're doing. See if their health is good, but also check on them to see how, how they're feeling uh, emotionally or mentally, how they're, how they're doing physically in other ways, whether they have enough groceries, whether they have enough toilet paper. Um, you know, ask them about you know, their anxiety. How are they feeling? Are they worried? Maybe pray with them. It's a little awkward at first to pray with somebody on the phone, I must confess, but you get used to it, and it's okay, and uh, people appreciate it. Of course, in this day and age, there are lots of other tools as well. There are all kinds of online tools, tools uh, that we can access through the internet. Facebook is one of those tools. Uh, you, you know that there's the, uh, the Facebook page that we have as a church, and there's also a group that we have, uh, the Congregation of Athens CRC. Um, those are available for our youth groups. There's a youth group Facebook group. There's, uh, there's all kinds of resources through Facebook. And, of course, there's just the resource of connecting with your friends and fellow congregation members uh, just through Messenger or through posting on people's walls or sending happy birthday messages. Uh, you can do similar things through Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat. You can even, I suppose, go for, uh, you know, weird videos on TikTok, posting encouraging videos for each other. And there's Athens Christian Reformed Church's website. You can check that out. Um, and you can check out our faith like faith life group hopefully many of you have received uh received an email inviting you to join our faith life group um it's not spam you can check it out join the group and uh hopefully there will be information there available for you on our sermons and uh, an opportunity to ask for prayer for things um, and uh, it's a good opportunity to check out um, some Bible study resources that you can access for free on your computer or phone or tablet or whatever. Also, there's the email prayer chain. And uh, you know about that. Hopefully you can talk to David and Yvonne Morgan if you want. You can look up their information in the directory and you can talk to them about getting onto the email prayer chain if you're not on that already. There's text messaging. It's simple, uh, easy to do uh, for those of you who know how to use your phones, uh, but it's a great way to connect as well. But there's other opportunities too, and I hope you remember uh, way back uh, about five years ago uh, when Gwyneth and I first got here, we started having Xenia fellowships in our home. Now, we can't have Xenia fellowships in our home, of course, at this point, but we're going to try. We're going to try to do Xenia fellowships via uh, online software uh, called Zoom, and uh, we, will, we will go through just, just like we did before the directory, and we will invite people to come and hang out with us uh, virtually over Zoom. So you should get, hopefully, in the next... Uh, the next week or so, you should get an invitation um, for the people in the first part of the alphabet. I'm not sure how many names I'll be able to do. We have pretty low internet bandwidth, but uh, we'll, we'll invite a few people and we'll just hang out and we'll just start going through the directory. Just start going through the directory and fellowshipping and uh, asking one another how things are going uh, in this time of, uh, yeah, of uncertainty and worry. Physical presence is still possible, too. For those of you who may not be real uh, internet savvy people uh, or may not be super great with calling folks on the phone, there are physical things that you can do even though you can't get together super close. I, I just heard uh, of uh, a, a little neighborhood, a cul-de-sac, where they had happy hour outside. Um, they all got to the end of their driveways, uh, and that's it keeping enough room between them, and they just sat down for, for a drink and a wave and a hello and how are you from a distance. Those things are still possible. 
um, you know, you can arrange to wave and hold signs outside someone's home if they're in quarantine. You can deliver groceries if you're not uh, needing to be in quarantine or self-isolation yourself. You can uh, use sidewalk chalk to write encouraging messages on the street or, or sidewalks in front of your neighbor's home. You can set up a bird feeder station outside the house of, of an elderly uh, neighbor or shut-in person. You can do uh, spring cleaning chores for the neighborhood, you know, clean up the trash in the neighborhood or, or help people with raking their leaves and stuff, even if you can't be close to them physically. You can even partner with CPHC or some other local organization to deliver meals or help other elderly or quarantined or isolated folks, folks in our congregation or outside. You can play games via video conferencing software. You know, you can play charades or bingo or trivia or chess over the internet, over a, a FaceTime, over Zoom or whatever it is that you use. And those are by no means the only opportunities. What can you think of doing? to connect, to fellowship, to encourage, to strengthen, to spur us on to do good deeds. What can you think of to do? Brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that you will be encouraged, that we will be encouraged, all of us, to not neglect getting together even though we can't get together physically that instead we'll make a conscious effort, a conscious effort to reach out to and call one another, to be with one another from a distance. Let's pray. Father in heaven, <clears throat> thank you for the spiritual discipline of fellowship. Thank you that in this day and age we can get together even when we can't be together. Thank you that there are so many ways that we can communicate love and encouragement to one another, even when we can't be right next to each other. Father in heaven, help us in this time to obey uh, the, the, the recommendations of our public health authorities and our government, and yet help us also to love one another, and love this world in which we live. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name.